like to um, first recognize anyone who is here with us for the first time today. Anyone? Nobody? You? Yeah, we're happy to see you. Right? We love you in this place. Call this, you can consider this your home. And whenever you are in the area, please be with us and worship God with us. We love you and welcome. Thank you. Anyone celebrating your birthday? Anniversary? All right. So this weekend, we, as a country, we recognize the life and works of Martin Luther King Jr. His birthday. Oh, really? Happy birthday, buddy. God bless you. Yeah. So we celebrate and recognize the life of Martin Luther King Jr. And this is an important time for us to reflect on the goodness that every one of us reflects. So today I'll be reflecting with you from the second reading. I'm sure this is a reading that you've read many times overall. But I want us to um, cast a new light on this reading in the context of what we celebrate this weekend. If you have your book, I'd like you to take this book up. Right, and take a look at that reading very closely. Let's see what the Bible says here. Writing to the church in Corinth, Paul says, Brothers and sisters, there are different kinds of gifts, or spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. Different kinds. The same spirit. He says, There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. Now, the central theme from this of this reading is sameness and difference. Sameness and difference. Now, this is a concept that people from almost every age have struggled with how to reconcile sameness and difference. If you did philosophy, ancient philosophy, you would realize that the ancient philosophy from Aonia, a great town, struggled with difference and sameness. How to reconcile those things. How to use them. How to understand them. Now, the danger is we could so misunderstand, misconceptualize sameness and difference. And instead of using them, as the Bible says, for a benefit, we use it to undermine ourselves. And in some cases, create division that destroy us. The Bible says that all of these are meant for benefit. A difference is meant for benefit. Now, I believe and I'm sure you will believe with me, that if God wanted us, every one of us, to, to have the same skin tone, God could do it, right? Because he is God. If God wanted every one of us to be one gender, and from one gender be able to reproduce, God could still do it. He just wanted only women to live. God could still bring out children because he did it from the Virgin Mary, Right? So God will still do it. But he made man and woman. If God wanted us to worship him the same way, everybody be Christian and know Jesus alone, God would have still done it. Because he's God. If God wanted us to have the same intellectual capabilities, the same skills and talents, God could still do it. If God wanted us to have to belong to one political party, God could still do it. If God wanted us to think homogeneously, so that everyone is thinking the same way, God could do it. God did not do it. Why is that? The Bible makes that very clear. Just so that every one of us would bring something that is so unique about you to enrich the collective whole. That's why that is. It's not an accident. 
It was part of God's plan for the beauty of the world. If you see flowers, all the same kind of flowers, they look boring. When you're able to bring a lot of flowers together and put them in their proper place, they reflect the beauty of, of difference. So difference isn't something that should scare us or frighten us or allow us, exploit it for wrong reasons. It's something that we must take advantage of and build that mosaic that shows uniqueness but so beautifully crafted together. You will agree with me that for some of us, we haven't so attuned, maybe from our childhood, however we were raised, to first come in contact with difference rather than sameness. So when I meet someone, the first thing I want to see, I want to see what is different about them. Is he a man or a woman? Is he a Catholic or, 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 or Protestant? Does he worship God like me or worship differently? Is he a natural born or an immigrant? So we, that's something we, 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 we are we call to see first. We don't see something that is foundational about every one of us. The sameness. That we're all human beings. That we're all God's children. That the person is my brother, my sister. Before I begin to recognize everything else that is different from me. What Paul is saying here, and what God has called us to do, is to first recognize sameness. Because that's, more, that's foundational. Sameness is, is a, the, the core of our, of, 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 our, of our substance, our humanity. We were first humans before we were citizens. We were first humans before we were Democrats or Republicans. We were first human before we were Catholics or whatever else that we are. We were first humans. That means that is the core of sameness. It's our humanity that we share together. So I asked myself this morning, Philip, what about you? Makes it easy for you when you come in contact with a Muslim that you see his Muslimness first and not his humanity. What about you? What about you makes you, when you meet someone who is gay, that what you see first is his gayness or her, or her lesbianism and not her humanity or his humanity. What about you? What about you when makes you when you see a Republican or a Democrat? What you see or hear first is his democratness or republicanness and not his or her humanity. What about you? What about you makes you when you see a poor man begging or hungry on the street? You don't see his humanity or her humanity. What you see first is his poverty and his lack. What about you? And that's the question I want every one of us asking yourselves today. It's not about the Democrat or the Republican. It's not about the Jew or the Muslim. It's not about the Protestant or anyone else or Catholic. It's about me. It's about you. There's something about you that makes you see difference first rather than sameness. Because if what you see in me is my color as different from you, that is going to be an inhibition on how you trust me or want to open up to me or embrace me unless you, are, you figure me out completely. But if what you see is sameness, is our common humanity, that inspires you to want to open up and predispose you to want to do business with me, to want to work with me, to want to have us solve problems together. And while we celebrate this with this weekend, that's something I want us thinking about. How can we so use our, our difference to benefit our nation and our country instead of doing what we're doing right now? Right now, as we speak, 800,000 of our brothers and sisters are going without pay after one month. That is not right. That's immoral. That's not okay. And there's something you and I can do today. Sometimes we, we think, well, I'm just some person somewhere. No one knows me. No one cares about me. I don't make decisions. They make decisions. No, you are important. And your voice is important. When I look at 
12 guys and Jesus Christ. 12 guys from Galilee and Jesus Christ. They changed the whole world and are still changing the world. 12 people. And there are more than 12 people right here sitting down here looking at me. If 12 guys were able to do that, I believe we can do something about it. We can change today, beginning today. Say to myself, challenge that which is in you. Confront that which is in you. That makes you see difference first. Rather than the foundational sameness. That makes you like your brother or your sister. Challenge that in you. I'm challenging that in me. What about me? Because it's about me. What are my categories for explaining the other when I see the other? Or I, I, I come in contact with the other? That's something I need to repent of. That's something that needs to change in me. I'm changing you too for the betterment of our country. You can start right now. You can begin to change the world right now. RFK, Robert F. Kennedy said something that I think I'd like to share with you. Robert F. Kennedy said, only few of us on earth will have the opportunity and the power to bend history itself. And one of those persons is the person we celebrate this weekend. Martin Luther King Jr. He was able to bend history itself. There are not so many who would have that privilege and that opportunity. But that every one of us sitting down here, by doing the little things we do good, the little good we do every day, we contribute to shaping the world in a better place and for a better, yet to put it in a better place. The entire world in a better place. You participate in choosing to not do the wrong thing. In choosing to not enforce or reinforce division, you participate in shaping the world in a wonderful way according to God's plan. God's plan. You can do it. I can do it. I don't have to sit in a position where I can change the whole world and change history itself. Let me just do the little good I can do and be that little voice of God that I can be to make the world a better place. And you can do that. And I can do that. And so when you live here today, dear friends, I want you to think about this. How can you, how can you be that one single voice that begins to change from inside out? Making the world, the vision, no, making our country reflect the vision of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He didn't just work for black Americans and work for every human being. When they spoke, he didn't just speak for Americans, he spoke for the world, he spoke for everyone. How can I be there? That I'm not just about seeing color, or seeing political party, or seeing religion, or seeing anything else that makes me different from someone else, but what makes me like someone else. How can you do that? How can I do that? That's the only way we can raise our children and offer them a future that they deserve. That's the only way you and I can go through this world and hand over to posterity a world that they deserve, a better world, not a divided and fractured world like as it is today. This is not what the vision of this country is. God intended to give us this country with people from everywhere coming together and sharing together and forming the greatest nation that ever, ever lived, the most powerful world, nation, the most ethical and moral nation that anyone else would want to be, this is, not, this is not a vision. Something is wrong. The good news is we can do something about it. And you can start here, right here from this place, on these pews. And begin to do something. Our children deserve a better country. Not what we have right now. And I hope and I pray that we don't just throw our hands in the air. And you know what? I just have one vote. It doesn't matter. Use it. I just have one voice. It doesn't matter. Speak up. I'm just one person. You do matter. Go change the world. My dear friends, I'd like to end by reminding you that God loves you very much. And there's power behind your humanity. Let us recognize that common identity, that common denominator of our humanity, and see how best we can work together and make the world, and make our country, the Lord be with you. Let us rise and bless our